Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and responsibilities by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. And today's discussion, inshallah, will be on visiting the washroom. Sheikhna, I remember when I was growing up um, and was studying fiqh, there was a very, very important rule in regards to facing the Qibla. You can't face or have something or, or have your back towards the Qibla. Um, is this the, the same with Sayyid Sadiq? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. Initially, uh, just a brief introduction. Um, Islam is one of the best and purest religion that offers purity, uh, especially with regard to using the, uh, the washroom and the bathroom. Um, unlike other religions, other uh, cultures, you would see that uh, many of them would just walk through um, that place and relieve themselves and they come out without washing, for example. And I remember one of the converts to Islam, one of the European converts, he said to me that uh, Islam is such pure that that made me convert to Islam due to the purity that it had. So Alhamdulillah, this is one of the graces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gave uh, the believers that they purify themselves um, even for the wudu as well, it is a purification and, and tathir. The Sayyid says it is wajib that you avoid um, sitting towards the qibla when you are in the toilet or um, the position either in the front or the back is towards the Qibla. So either way, you make sure that you do not sit uh, and relieve yourself while you are towards the Qibla, or the Qibla is in the back, back side. And um, the, the best so solution for that is, if, well, if it's a, a fixed uh, mm. toilet, then you have to move your body, your shoulders, your chest, away from the Qibla. Okay. Um, so you really adjust so your seating position. Exactly. Away from the Qibla, and that, that's sufficient. You exactly. don't have to rip out the toilet and make a new toilet and you know move it to the side or something like that if if that is the case where you want to sit down normally then you have to rip the, uh, the toilet and then actually divert it to different mm -hmm. direction of the qibla but otherwise if somebody is comfortable with it um, they can actually sit either in the left or side or the, to the right side of the uh, toilet and they can actually sit down otherwise they have to actually change the whole set uh, is there um, an exception for this rule? Are there any exceptions? Yes, for the children, um, if they go and sit um, in the toilet themselves, uh, then you don't have to force them to move them, even if it's towards the Qibla. So for the children, because the, usually the children, they're not mukallaf, they're not in the okay. position of reaching the level of adolescence and the ahkam would, would, not, would not be wajib on them. Shaykhna, are there any places where we are not allowed to go to the washroom or we're not allowed to relieve ourselves? Well, there are um, five places where the one cannot actually relieve themselves um, in these places. And um, of course, uh, we don't want to commit sins for that, for, that, for that cause and try to ignore uh, this issue. And it's mainly social issue, it's, it's to do with social. Um, the first place which is mentioned in the Risala, it is the dead and narrow streets. Where there are a couple houses in that dead, dead and narrow. And that street is actually shared by those neighbors. Okay. So we're not allowed actually to use this place. Are you talking about outside in public or are you talking about using one of their bathrooms? No, no, it's outside. Okay. Because the, that dead end narrow now belongs to those neighbors. Okay. So you cannot actually, it's like a private road, ah, in other words. Ah, I see. You have to ask permission if you want to do anything mm -hmm. uh, from the neighbors. So okay. you're not allowed to actually to use that road for, as a toilet or mm -hmm. relieving yourself, unless with the permission. And <clears throat> similarly, it's to do with the free passage paths as well. Um, again, which have no dead ends, again, 
it is used mainly by the people in the streets. So it's actually a social issue as well. So we try to actually avoid annoying people, you know, the smell, the look of the streets. Yes. It would cause a um, um, health issue as well. So if anything that causes and harms people, it becomes haram uh, to harm people. Yes. The second category is in the property of a person, okay. in the house of a person, in a building, um, belongs to somebody who does not give the permission to use the, for example, toilet. So, again, it's because if I go without the permission, it becomes ghasl. It's okay. like usurping mm -hmm. this place, which is act, the, the act of usurp is itself haram. Um, Nevertheless, the, the act of using the, their toilets. So we have to avoid it as well. It's a, it is a requirement and we need the permission. If they didn't give it, then we're not allowed to use. Mm -hmm. The third category is also in the places that are dedicated to particular people. Let's say somebody comes and says, well, this building is only for the house students. Okay. Or it's only for the elderly. You know, for the disabled, yes. nobody can access and use. Again, this becomes like waqf. Okay, so like, like, um, for example, in, in, in today's day and age, when we're at a shop or something, we see sometimes staff toilets. Exactly. We're not allowed to use those. Of course. Unless we have permission. Of course. That's them. only for the staff and you have to ask permission. So okay. we try to avoid these places unless if the permission is given, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. Or even some people, uh, some restaurants, for example, um, the... The, the washrooms are only for the customers. Paying customers, yes. So that's also we have to consider as well. When we go there, we make sure we buy something at least. Mm -hmm. And then we can use the, uh, the washroom there. Um, the fourth one is by the graveyard of the uh, believers, of the mu'min. Okay. It's just to respect the mu'min's dignity. And uh, when he was alive, now he's dead. Yes. So we still respect that mu'min, although he's dead and in his grave but we're not allowed to mm -hmm. um, actually breach this um, respect of the mu'min, although it's a grave. Um, the fifth one is in the respected places, um, the sanctity of, this, of the mosques, for example, okay. the, uh, the greatness of the mosques and the holy shrines of Ahl Bayt and such like we spoke upon them all. Again, we're not allowed to use uh, the actual place where people worship read dua, they sit, mm -hmm. the surroundings, you know, the courtyard, for example. Yes. We're not allowed actually to use them for this purpose, for relieving. to go to the designated exactly. washroom. Exactly. Every mosque, every holy shrine, they have their own designated uh, bathrooms, washrooms. You can go there and use them, but not inside. Uh -huh. Or even, even the outside, it's also um, uh, it's a breach to the uh, sanctifying and respecting that holy shrine or mosque. Again, outside is the same as inside. So anything that causes uh, indignity, disrespect to uh, the one, uh, as I've mentioned, as a graveyard of Mu'min, mm -hmm. or the holy shrines or the mosques or the holy places of Muslims, that's also forbidden. Ascent. So, Sheikh, uh, in regards to uh, the washroom, we know this is where we go to uh, relieve ourselves. We know that this place can be highly contaminated with Najasa. Is it safe to say that the washroom is Tahir or is it safe to say that it is Najis? So if I'm in the bathroom, maybe I'll take my jacket off or something before I go. If, if it scrapes the floor or if it drops on the floor, do I say that this is Najis now or is it Tahir? Well, again, the rule is that everything is Tahir unless you are certain that it's najis. You see it or somebody uh, tells you about the najasa. In overall, when you walk in uh, a bathroom or a washroom and you see nothing, no signs of najasa, of impurities, then, then that's, that's tahir. Now you drop your pen and it's wet, for example, the floor is wet, the, or the, uh, the tap is wet, for example. The all tahir, unless, as I've said, uh, you see the najasa yourself or somebody tells you about that this place is najis, then you have to avoid it. And that's the rule, basically. Sheikh, uh, I get this question asked a lot. If uh, it's time for prayer and um, 
I'm not sure if I want to go toilet or not. I have wudu, but I'm not sure that do I really desperately need the toilet or I can hold it and I can go pray and I can go afterwards. What is the correct thing to do at that moment? Well, the, the best thing always is to, um, before, this is one of the adab and the manners of wudu and, and, and salah. Basically, the one who wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the prayer, to face Allah and stand before uh, his Lord and, and speak to him, you have to be uh, ready uh, in terms of the purity, in terms of internal purity and outside purity. So you have to make sure that you've relieved yourself from um, the excess amount of uh, the liquids you have. And, um, and then you come to the wudu, you do the wudu, and you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humbleness and comfortness, and you start your worship and uh, your salah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's better for the one to prepare himself before we actually start the ibadah. Shaykhna, um, are you familiar with the story in regards to the man that was um, urinating in the mosque? And Rasulullah told him, uh, people were going to approach this person, uh, but Rasulullah told him not to because um, this person comes from a different area. I mean, what is the Ahqam rulings in that situation? What are we supposed to do? Well, in overall, uh, making the masjid, the mosque, najis, it's it itself haram and forbidden. And if any Muslim sees a najasa, they should straight away, even before the, they pray, even before they start the pray, they have to purify and make the, that uh, place tahir mm -hmm. and pure, and then they go to uh, begin their salah. So it's important for the believers, the mu'mineen, to take care of these things and to avoid uh, making the mosque um, in somehow impure or de even dirty, in, you know, for example, leaving their tissues, used tissues or papers mm -hmm. or anything else on the floor to make, I mean, these holy places as if, if it our, was our own homes and houses. So we try to avoid in somehow uh, disrespecting these places because others would come and also use it. So if they see, uh, for example, rubbish or impurities, they would avoid coming to the mosque. And Allah knows how many uh, narrations are there encouraging Muslims to go and pray jama'ah mm -hmm. in the mosque and attend the mosque in a narration which says that um, the, uh, the one who is neighbor and next to the mosque, his prayer is not really accepted in that level that if he prayed in the mosque would have been accepted more. And he would get more thawab and reward. So if somebody goes there and messes around the mosque um, and he just ignores uh, the teachings of Islam in terms of, of the purity and tahara and, mm -hmm. and cleanliness, then that's against the, the teachings and the manners of Islam. In yes, Shaykhna, some of our brothers and sisters require care. Physically, they can't move themselves. Um, some of them can't even go to the washroom by themselves. What's the ahkam rules on that? That is their carer allowed to assist them? Is he allowed to see uh, and, and help take care of uh, the patient? Well, as I've mentioned, it is haram for and forbidden for um, the one to see other, others, others' private parts and they have to cover it, especially in the bathroom while washing or using the toilet, for example. And for those who provide care and assistance, they have to make sure they avoid looking and they try to assist as much as they can. Uh, and uh, they try to do their best to avoid uh, um, seeing because it's haram uh, in all ma matters. Sheikh, another issue is that um, most of us coming from the East, we use uh, water to uh, purify ourselves after we go to the toilet. Um, sometimes we don't have access to water here in the West. Um, it's not practiced as much. They use tissue paper. Um, what is the best advice you can give uh, a muqallif what to do in that situation? Well, there are two options. Uh, the first option 
um, is to actually take with yourself to the toilet a bottle or a cup of water. And then with that ma'al a little bit of water, you can still purify yourself. As I've mentioned, for the, uh, for the urine, uh, you must do twice. So two rinses uh, with ma'al uh, a little bit of water. Um, if the, there are no water available around and you just walk, walk inside and um, you're living with yourself, then um, you can use the tissue for the moment, but the, the najasa and the impurity remains there. Mm. So you have to go back home, wash yourself, make tathir, and even if the underwear was also najis, mm -hmm. you change it, you make it uh, pure, and then uh, that's it. You prepare yourself for the ibadah or the salah with a pure uh, clothes and pure body. Thank you very much, Sheikhna. And thank you to the viewers for joining us on this discussion. I hope it was very informative for yourselves. Um, if you have any questions that you would like to discuss with us on Ihkam, please send them into the contact details provided and the Shaykhna will answer them as soon as he can. Until next time, stay safe, stay clean. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.